Hey guys, it's Viva, and since it is now the last week of December of 2015, I thought I would do my top 15 books of 2015. I couldn't pick uh, my least favourite and then my most favourite, so I've just ordered all of my books in alphabetical order according to authors' surnames. Number one is Love Rosie by Cecilia Ahern. I've decided that it is Ahern. I don't know if it is, but anyway. Um, I don't have a physical copy of this book, unfortunately, um, but I adored this book. This is one of the few books that I've actually read after seeing the film, and it was so, so cute. I really like the format of the book, as there are letters and emails in it, so I really like that. Um, and I just really, really love the plot. I'm really, really glad that the characters got their happy ending. The second book is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I have only recently read this book and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It's about um, separation of different blood types. So um, the reds are the commoners. They have the red blood and they are um, seen as weak and um, like servants. They're basically treated like servants by the silvers who are the uh, royalty noble class people. Um, so they have silver blood and they have special powers. So it could be, I don't know, powers with um, fire or they could be able to mind read, that sort of thing. And it follows the story of Mare who is a red girl but she can use electricity, so she has a silver power, which the Silvers are not very happy about. So the Silver royal family decides to get Mare engaged to Maven, who is their younger son, um, just to cover up um, the whole thing. And they make a story up saying that she's actually a lost Silver who's been raised by Reds, uh, which isn't actually the case. And um, so basically there's a lot that happens and um, quite a lot of betrayals as well which was really interesting not predictable in the slightest which I absolutely loved I don't I do like predictable books sometimes um, but I love surprises and this was full of surprises so I can't wait for the glass sword which comes out in February I think next year oh, really looking forward to it and also the film Elizabeth Banks is directing the film cannot wait book number three is Night Owls by Jen Bennett or the anatomical shape of a heart in America. Um, I have mentioned this in one of my previous videos. I think it was probably like a wrap up or something. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. This was just a very contemporary light read. Following the story of Bex, who is an artist, she likes drawing anatomy, and then Jack, who is a really rich kid, who does graffiti um, for, for a reason, for a really, really good reason. But uh, he does that and just it's their love story and how they meet and the issues that they face. And yeah, so if you're looking for a light-hearted, sort of really easy read, because it's quite short as well, then pick up Night Owls. Book number four is End of Days by Susan E. So this is the finale of the Angel Fall series, which I read last year. This came out sometime this year, I can't remember when, I think it might have been around the summertime, but it was so good. Um, I felt that it was a little bit rushed. I feel like um, this could have been made into two books. Um, I think Susan was just in a rush to finish it. Um, I felt that at times because there was a lot more detail that could have been added. But I still love it. I don't love it any less than I love the other two books. Um, Raffi and Penryn's story is just, what can you say? If you haven't read the Angel Fall series, why have you not? Because it's one of my top, top series on my list of favourite series. So definitely go and give this a read. It's basically about an angel apocalypse and how um, humans and angels uh, join forces. Well, one angel and one human join forces, um, but it's love story in amongst other things and I love love stories. Book number five is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this book in my, one of, any of my previous videos, um, but I think it's quite popular. A lot of people have, I know have read this book and it basically um, follow, follows the story of this girl called Lara Jean who um, used to write letters to the boys that she had a crush on as a sort of closure. So she'd have a crush on someone and then decide that she doesn't like them anymore and then write a letter and put it into her little hat box and one day all of these letters are sent out to the boys and it's just how she faces the embarrassment of going to school and seeing these boys who she had a crush on in I don't know like six seven years ago and um, how she decides that she does actually like one of those boys that she wrote a letter to and yeah so I really, really, really need to read the second one, which is called P.S. I Love You. Um, I Still Love You. P.S. I Still Love You, I think. 
I don't know, I don't have it, but I need it now. Book number six is Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. Now this I have definitely mentioned because I remember saying how this actually made me cry when Morgan Matson's books don't make me cry. Um, but yeah, this basically follows the story of Taylor Edwards, whose dad has cancer. You find that out, so it's not a spoiler. Um, he has cancer and he decides that for his last summer he wants to spend it at their old lake house. So they go up there together and um, Taylor hasn't been there for five years now. So she's le at the time she left her boyfriend and her best friend behind and now she has to face them and get over some issues that she has. And the ending was just heartbreaking, but yeah, one of my favourites. Morgan Matson is just one of my favourite authors. She's so amazing. She just has a real, real talent for writing. Number seven is another Morgan Matson book that I unfortunately don't have. This was the first Morgan Matson book that I read and it's Since You've Been Gone. I adored this book. So basically it's about these two girls who are best friends and one of them just goes missing, I guess, but leaves uh, the other best friend. I've The names have escaped me. I can't remember the names of the characters because I read this quite early on in the year. But um, I remember the one that goes missing is Slow, Slowen, Sloan, Sloan, I'm going to say, I don't really know how to say it. Um, but she leaves letters for her best friend who stays behind of um, list, it's a list of things that she has to do. So she has to do things like go skinny dipping, steal things, steal, steal something, break something, that sort of thing. And I just found it really inspiring. And after reading the book, I actually sent a similar list to my best friend who lives in the Netherlands, um, telling her to do some of these things. I've not actually checked up to see if she's done them yet, so. I should probably do that but yeah since you've been gone is absolutely amazing it's just a very contemporary light-hearted easy read so definitely give that a read if you have okay the eighth book on my list is not a book it's an entire series and it's the lunar chronicles which is actually behind me here uh, but i just couldn't be bothered to take it out uh but they are by far the best series that i've read this year because and i've read quite a few series this year i read the Hush Hush series, I read the Shiver, well the first book's called Shiver, I can't remember what the series is called, uh, I read Blood Red Road, so I have read quite a few series, but that was by far my favourite. Um, where do I even start? I have said for quite a while now that I'm going to be making an entire video based on the Luna Chronicles, and I will still be, I'm in the process of just writing up all my stuff and then filming it, um, but I'm not going to say much about it. The characters are sort of related to the Disney versions of themselves, so you have Cinder, which is Cinderella, Scarlet is Red Riding Hood, um, Cress is Rapunzel, and then Winter is Snow White, so they're sort of similar to their fairy tale parallels, but different in so many ways, and it's amazing. If you haven't read The Lunar Chronicles, then I urge you to read it because they are absolutely amazing and a video will be coming very soon hopefully um, of my review of the entire series. Ninth book, book on my list is The Sky Is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. Now I was uh, given this book to review by Maximum Pop Books. My opinion is not based on the fact that I was given this to review. I did really really just enjoy the book. Um, I read I'll Give You the Sun before I read this and I didn't enjoy that one as much. I filmed a review of this so I'll leave a link down below if you want to go and check out my review of The Skies Everywhere so I won't go babbling on because this video is going to be long as it is and I don't want to just repeat myself if I've got something else out there but yes The Skies Everywhere, Jandy Nelson, give it a read. Now my 10th book on the list, I said I wouldn't be partial but this is definitely in the top three books that I read this year and it's All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. It was one of the first books that I read this year and I, I just love it. Again, I filmed a review for this, I think it was like my first, second video on this channel. I will leave a link down below for it as well. Um, but it's just beautiful. It's so beautifully written. Jennifer Niven has such pure talent when it comes to writing and making you feel things because oh my god did this book make me feel things. I was literally on a roller coaster of emotions throughout this entire book and the ending oh, no but yeah 
Uh, again, I'm not going to say much about this because I've already filmed a review, um, but the main themes in this book are suicide. Again, it's a love story, so obviously I had to love it. Number 11, again, is a series. This is probably the second favourite series that I read this year, and it's the Anna and the French Kiss series. So you have Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After. Now, I do have these books, but I have loaned them out to a friend because I'm just such a nice person. Um, but yeah, I don't have them with me at the minute, but they are one of my favourite series ever, I think. The way that Stephanie Perkins writes these books is just amazing, and I love how they're all interlinked. At first, when I started the series, I didn't think that they'd all um, bring, that they'd have the same characters and would bring the characters from the other books into them, so that was a really, really lovely surprise. Um, but. Yeah, again, I've mentioned these books in wrap-ups and I've sort of reviewed them as well. Um, so basically, it's, it's three love stories. Um, Anna and the French Kiss follows Anna in France and she falls for this guy whose name is currently just gone from my head. St. Clair. There we go. Got it. St. Clair. Um, Lola and the Boy Next Door is Lola and Cricket Bell. And then Isla and the Happily Ever After is Isla and Josh. I'm not entirely sure which one my favourite is. I love them all equally, I think. If you're looking for a really, really easy read um, that's not very um, tear-jerking or heartbreaking or, you know, really hard to read and get into, then this is definitely a series that you should read because it was so easy. Finished it in about a week, or three of them, and just, they made me really, really happy. Number 12 on my list is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which again is just here, but because it's sort of underneath everything I really can't be bothered to get it out. It's um, very different to Rainbow Rowell's other books because it's fantasy based, so it follows the story of Simon Snow, who is the chosen one, um, sort of like Harry Potter, but it has quite a few parallels to Harry Potter, but is very different in other ways. You have the evil being insidious humdrum and then you have a magical school Watford and then you have like a headmaster mostly it's very different to Harry Potter uh, I have again done a review of this book so I'll leave the link down below if you want to go and check that out and yeah gonna move on to the next one number 14 is the geography of you and me by Jennifer E Smith I read this book very very early on in the year and haven't had a chance to reread it so I'm a little rusty about what happens but I do remember just loving it I think most of the books that I've read this year and are in my top 15 are very light-hearted and are really contemporary books, They're not, there's not much fantasy I'd say except for Carry On in the Lunar Chronicles. Oh, and Red Queen, actually. So in this, Owen and Lucy are stuck in the lift and um, the electricity goes out and they spend a night together um, and then it sort of runs through their following year for them and how they stay in touch and keep meeting at different places and eventually find each other and stay together. Yeah, there's a sort of recurring theme in the books that I like. I, I love love stories, as I have mentioned before, and this was just a really adorable one. Also, I got this book, book at the works for £2. It was in the uh, 3 for £5 offer. So if you're in the works and are just browsing, then do pick this up because it's worth it. And the last book in my top 15 of 2015 is again a series that hasn't yet been finished and it's The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey which again I do have the books for but I have given them out to a friend. The Fifth Wave follows the story of Cassie um, during an alien apocalypse. Basically aliens have invaded the earth and are taking over human bodies so it's quite um, difficult to identify who is the human and who is the alien and it's Cassie's journey to save her brother. It's a really really entertaining series. Um, I can't wait for the third book to come out and the film as well which comes out next month. But yes, The Fifth Wave, you should definitely definitely give this a read, especially if you're going to be going to see the film. Please read it before because I assure you it will probably make things a lot more understandable. But when it comes to young, young adult um, books and movies, I always prefer reading it before I go to watch it just because I can relate to it more and it, it's, it's just better. Those people who watch the films and then read the book afterwards, I don't really understand you. That's my top 15 of 2015. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Happy New Year, everyone.